What's going on guys? Got a great pitching question today from Tanner. He's on Instagram at Raised in Baseball. If you haven't seen his account, pretty cool account. Young kid shows all his training on there. I definitely suggest you go give him a follow. But his question, a great question is, well, I guess it's not really a question, but he says, would love to see a video about things you look for to pick a batter apart. Now, I'm a little bit different than most guys, or at least I think I'm a little bit different than most guys. I don't try to pitch to hitters weaknesses. So I like to pitch to my strengths versus trying to find the hitters weaknesses. Now with that being said, of course I'm gonna look at the hitter, see what he's doing, and if there's anything that I can exploit to pick him apart, I'm absolutely gonna take advantage of that if it's gonna help me. But I always wanted to feel like my best stuff could get anyone in the game out. And when you can develop your pitches to be that way and you're so confident in them to throw it any count, you're going to be more successful. Having that confidence and the conviction behind your pitches is number one, in my opinion, to everything else. So you have to build your pitches, uh, you know, so that you're confident in throwing them against anybody instead of going, you know what, this guy, he can't hit a slider, even though my, my fastball, my sinker was my best pitch. Instead of throwing that, my second best pitch to try to capitalize on his weaknesses I may say, you know what, I don't think anybody can hit my sinker. So I'm going to go ahead and, and try to bury that one low and inside. So now with that being said, that was 90% of my philosophy. There was some times when I looked at the hitter and tried to come up with things on how I can exploit him, uh, his weaknesses, or if he's telling me something, I'm going to use that against them. Now here's the biggest part. Here's the biggest thing that I did. Let's say I got a righty up to bat and he fouls a ball off. Foul balls are huge because it tells you what's going on with the hitter. If he fouls a ball straight back, what does that mean? That means he's on time. A lot of coaches think, you know, he fouled it back, oh, he's late. No, he's actually, if he fouled it straight back, he's actually right on your pitches. So that tells me something. That might tell me that I need to change my speed, right? So if I threw a fastball there, maybe I'll go to a slider there. If I threw a slider there, maybe i go to a fastball there. So when he fouls it back, change the speed. Now. If he's a righty and he fouls it off to the first base side, then he's late, okay? So now I know he's late. What happens with a lot of guys is they'll throw a fastball, and I was guilty of this too many times. I would throw a fastball, he would be late, and then i go, oh, um, well, he hit it, he fouled it off, so let me throw the slider here. No, we're speeding his bat up there, okay? So what I learned later in my career, which I wish I knew earlier was, if you throw that pitch and he's late, throw that fastball and he's late on it, throw it again, throw it again, throw it again. Until he shows that he's making an adjustment and getting closer and closer to that foul line, you keep throwing it. You keep going hard. I remember one at bat, uh, I think we were in like Lincoln, Nebraska or somewhere crazy like that, but there was a batter. I wish I remember his name. And I'm pitching against him. I probably threw eight fastballs that he fouled off down the line. And then he kept getting closer and closer to the foul line. One of them, the last one, almost came fair. Then I broke out the slider and struck him out, you know, so that was that was probably the only time that I reverted to the slider But he was showing me that he was making an adjustment over the course of the at bat So stick with your fastball in that situation now. Let's say the same righty uh, Hits your fastball, but he pulls it foul down the third base side now You know that he's early that is a perfect time to go to the slider or whatever your off speed is because he was early on your fastball. He's going to be really early on your off-speed stuff. So I definitely used foul balls of a hitter to tell me what to throw. Um, one tip, too, that I can give you is if you let's say you do throw that fastball, that righty fouls it off down the third baseline, then you throw that slider. Let's say he's still early, but he fouls it off. He gets bad on it. The next one you want to throw is lower and slower. So if you're going back-to-back off-speed, right, the second one always wants to be lower and slower, right? You don't want to speed up his bat. You don't want to bring it up higher in the zone because that's easier to hit. So another philosophy that I live by that uh, that I would use to get batters out is never get beat by your third best pitch after your second best pitch if they're both off speed. So let me explain real quick. For example, I threw a slider and a fork ball, okay? My fork ball was a good pitch but it wasn't as good as, sorry, my camera died, so I had to switch cameras on you real quick. Uh, let's, for example, say you throw a slider and a changeup, okay? But your slider is way better than your changeup, okay? I would never throw a slider and then a changeup, right? Because 
they're going to be they're going to be slower pitches. They're both off-speed pitches, so they're going to be around the same hitting speed, right? So if I throw a slider, which is my good pitch, and then I back that up with a changeup, which is around the same speed, but it's not as good. I just set that hitter up timing-wise to hit that changeup. You know what I'm saying? Now, I could go changeup slider because the slider's a better pitch, but I never want to go slider changeup. And th that's not true for everyone. It depends on how you value your pitches or rank your pitches, right? For some guys, it might be the opposite. Changeup slider, slider changeup, whatever it is. Or you may not even throw a slider or a changeup, but you never want to get beat with your second best pitch, or excuse me, you never want to get beat with your third best pitch after your second best pitch if they're both off speed. I hope that makes sense. So those are just a few philosophies that I use to pick apart batters. Really, the only thing that I used against them pitching to their weakness versus my strength was reading their timing off of foul balls. Uh, again, if a guy had like a huge hole in a swing, like if, it, you know, if, if I got up there and I threw a guy a slider and he just absolutely looked horrible at it, yeah, I might throw him more sliders just because of what he showed me. But for the most part, I'm sticking with my best stuff, which for me was my sinker. In fact, my senior year of college, uh, at Auburn University, I threw 97% sinkers. I barely threw a slider. Matter of fact, I didn't throw a slider all year until the end of the year. The scout, the Padre scout said, you know, how come you don't throw a slider? I said, because they can't hit my sinker. He said, please throw a slider so I could draft you a little bit higher. So I started throwing a slider the last like two, three weeks of the season and it became a great pitch. In fact, when I got to the Padres organization, my slider was ranked number one out of all the sliders in the whole organization. So it ended up being a great pitch for me. I'm so glad that I learned it. I'm grateful for that scout for making me throw it. Um, my sinker was also the number one sinker. It was the number two fastball overall in the organization. Um, but uh, that was that was my bread and butter. That's, to me, the reason why I got in draft, got drafted. And it's because I had that confidence and conviction behind throwing that pitch, those pitches. Because when you believe in your stuff and you just go right at those batters versus trying to pitch to his weaknesses to get him out, I feel like you just you're in a better mind state. You've got you've got more confidence, more conviction, and you're just ready to get the job done. So I actually made a program. It's called the Advanced Sinker and Slider Training Course. So you can check that out. I also got advanced forkball and splitter training. Um, so if you guys are asked, interested in trying to learn some new pitches, uh, you know, I definitely suggest checking those out. I'll leave the links down below. But uh, thanks again, Raising Baseball. That was a great question. Uh, appreciate it. Don't forget to go check him out on the Instagram. I'll talk to you guys later.